All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, every Monday through Friday, talking all things professional wrestling on the GSMC Sports Network here on the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. Just got to reflect on what we talked about. We talked about our WWE SmackDown review. We had my Thursday Night Wrestling uh, uh, review. Uh, we had SmackDown preview, sorry, excuse me. And, um, you know, we talked about TNA. We talked about Ring of Honor, a little bit about the NWA. Then we talked about AEW, Don, uh, Rampage and Collision. AEW coming to an agreement with Warner Brothers Discovery, finally. And lastly, we're going to talk about all the major news happening within the professional wrestling circa. You know, everything that, you know, you kind of get, get, you know, kind of see on Instagram and you're like, oh, sh-, like, that's crazy. So, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and dig on into that. So, yeah, if I can find it, there we go. There we go. All right, a wrestling news roundup. So we are facing major global issues in our nation, in the United States, affecting travel plans for professional wrestling. Absolutely IT issues, which is, you know, I don't want to be the one to be like, hey, like that conspiracy theorist would be like, hey, I told you so. Like, you know what I mean? But if you rely on technology so damn much, like it's, it's something's got to get. Something's got to get. So, you know, this is obviously, you know, troublesome. Obviously, a lot of things that are, you know, a lot of a lot of negative aspects, a lot of negative consequences and actions that come from this, um, you know, technical disasters affecting government agencies and businesses. It's leading to stranded, pa- uh, stranded passengers who, uh, you know. As well as uh, canceled medical procedures, uh, disrupted 911 services. Uh, the issue has basically uh, this issue has paralyzed airlines, banks state agencies and you know emergency services worldwide that's you know that's crazy that's insane you know obviously you know depending a lot on your technological advances within uh you know within the world it's you know it's not it's 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 a very delicate situation i only say that because you know you know obviously i was kind of brought up right before the digital era really kind of took off which I feel like the digital era really took off in like, you know, 2009, 2010. I honestly did not have my first cell phone until I was like 21 years old, 21 years old. And I was like, you know, I had those flip phones for a little while. And when you had to buy minutes, I remember buying minutes or the Nicola, the Nicola, the Nicola, the Nicola phones, the Nicola. You just had the game snake on it. It's technology is ruling this world. And that's, you know, obviously this is a wrestling podcast, but when we're kind of dealing with this issue and stuff like that, it's just, you know, it's kind of crazy how it kind of comes all full circle. It's going to, oh, like, how does uh, IT issues or cyber attacks affect the world of wrestling? This is exactly why. So many delays. We had uh, over 2,700 flights canceled and 9,000 delayed, according to flightaware.com. So, you know, definitely kind of crazy. Wish the best. Obviously, we do have... Uh, TNA impacts a slam anniversary. Hopefully nothing happens to the point where the main event has to be altered. Hopefully nothing really happens like that. I feel like this was a real issue. I feel like this was, you know, this kind of got serious when WWE SmackDown decided to have double tapings tonight at, uh, you know, in Omaha, Nebraska, they are uh, filming the, you know, SmackDown for the 26th. So, you know, definitely maybe think that, okay, maybe they are kind of gearing for it to maybe possibly get worse. But um, I know it's just kind of crazy how, you know, real global issues could, you know, affect the world of professional wrestling. So thousand and ten percent, you know, kind of kind of crazy, kind of crazy. Next, we have uh, Hikuleo from New Japan Professional Wrestling has officially joined the WWE. The ink's dry, contract is signed, and we are ready to introduce another another person into the young bloodline. So, you know, kind of crazy, the brother of Tamatanga and Tongaloa. So when will he make his debut? I am not too sure. Maybe perhaps it could be to cost Cody Rhodes the world of the WWE Undisputed Championship at WrestleMania 39. He was cost the WWE champion, uh, the uh, Universal and Undisputed Championship from Roman Reigns because of, you know, the attack by one of his families and stuff like that. Just a lot of, you know, just they're bringing in the fifth member. The bloodline that I know, obviously, four members, the Uso, Soliskoa, and Roman Reigns, of course, the wise man. So maybe the wise man kind of leaves that open a little bit. 
maybe perhaps they don't need a wise man. They're just their wise man and their tribal chief is one in so uh, Solo Sokoa. All I know is this guy, Kiku Leo, New Japan professional wrestling star, is dynamite. This guy has a lot of talent. This guy is kind of on that Jacob Fatsu kind of level. It's kind of sad, and I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean. It's kind of sad how every member of the bloodline is better than Solo Sokoa. They are better than Solo Sokoa. Solo Sokoa, you trash. Step down. You should not even be the enforcer. I'm just kidding. No, he should be the shoe shiner. I'm just kidding. No, don't. But Hikaleo, the Tamatanga, the Tongan twins, Tungaloa, Jacob Fatu are all very phenomenal superstars and wrestlers that come from the MLW, that has come from, you know, the, a lot of other independent wrestling circuits like New Japan Professional Wrestling. And like, they're better than Solo. I would rather see them in the ring with Solo. I mean, instead of Solo. Ah, it's crazy. But, you know, we are stuck with the hand where we are dealt. We have this very impressive young, the younger brother of uh, Toma Tanga and Tangaloa making his way to WWE finally. It's been a rumored, God, it's been rumored for at least four months now. When Once when I started, you know, doing the show, it's been, it's been rumored for the longest time. Kind of crazy. Kind of, kind of crazy. Next, we have the news that The Undertaker wanted more for the Ministry of Darkness. Obviously, you saw the Ministry of Darkness. Viscera, Minion, Farouk, and Bradshaw. You also saw Edge, Christian, Paul Bearer, and Gangrel. But The Undertaker wanted more. He wanted to take it into a direction that was a little more eerie. He said that he wanted to, you know, he was pushing for, um, you know, on the while he was on the Six Feet Under podcast, he said, and he aimed to use more sinister imagery as well as symbolism. He wanted to push to make people feel highly uncomfortable, and you you got that to a certain extent. Obviously, the crucifixion of uh, you know, Stephanie McMahon was kind of crazy, but I feel like once when you kind of had the Bray Wyatt of the world, and now that you saw W, now that you see WWE enter into this PG era. Once when it was the Attitude Era, once when you kind of had The Undertaker doing his thing from the Ministry of Darkness, maybe perhaps you could have had something happen within the Attitude Era that could absolutely scare the pants off of viewers. Think The Undertaker, like, dude, this complete, absolute badass, dude. The Undertaker, give him all the credit in the world, and I will, a thousand and ten percent. But, I, you know, I've seen his past matches. I've seen his past pay-per-views, you know, with Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H. And, like, he didn't win all the time. As a matter of fact, he was kind of, like, understated a little bit. And that's my opinion, 1,010%. I, I, I feel like The Undertaker was, you know, one, the one thing he really had to cherish was that undefeated streak at WrestleMania. He didn't really have the accolades. He's not a five- or six-time WWE World Champion. The the reason why I feel like Vince McMahon didn't want the Ministry of Darkness to kind of get a little more overboard was ultimately I didn't feel like he wanted to he wanted them to outshine anybody else, and I know that might be a little ignorant to say maybe maybe um you know maybe you have the mat on for Vince McMahon, but through Vince McMahon's actions, through the way Vince McMahon was portrayed, the way he well, is, it wouldn't surprise me if that was exactly the case. That The Undertaker was somebody that should have been like a 16-time world champion. Hell yeah. Oh my god, yes. That should have happened. But it never did. It never did because The Undertaker was complacent. He obviously backed up Vince McMahon 1,010%. He was a team player. He's a team player. Definitely something that, you know, he wasn't very hellacious in the backstage he wasn't confrontational with Vince McMahon he went out there he did exactly what you wanted him to do maybe just maybe if he would have pushed a little bit maybe we would see the Undertaker be more of a sinister looking guy what he originally wanted to to do shake up the audience make them feel uncomfortable get them scared bring in that horror movie kind of esque, feel grotesque a little bit of gory a little bit of just like Amityville kind of, you know, scary feeling. It could have been done. Done right in the right hands. It would have been would have been amazing. But The Undertaker, ultimately, it didn't really happen. 
tell me how you feel in the comment section. Tell me how you feel how the Undertaker, um, you know, did during his ministry of darkness walk. All right. Next, we have the Tonga Twins spotted at the WWE Performance Center. Uh, ta uh, Tahini and also uh, uh, Talaval, um, you know, they were spotted at the WWE Performance Center. Could we be heading toward a female bloodline? Maybe. Mm, I doubt it. But I feel like, you know, just kind of flirting with that idea would be pretty badass. They they departed from uh, a WoW Wrestling, Women of Wrestling. And, you know, due to allegations of bullying other superstars and stuff like that, really not a good look. Really not a good look on the Tunga twin, uh, on the Tungan twins or the Tunga, you know, whatever, you know, Tunga, Tama, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not really sure you want to bring bullies into your wrestling promotion, WWE. Like, just because, uh, you know, you might, like, do this uh, wrestling, you know, this new women's bloodline and stuff like that. Nia Jax, Tamina, maybe even Naomi Jones or something like that. It's, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it a thousand and ten percent. I would, you know, uh, to be honest, I, I would kind of hate for these Tonga twins to make their debut within WWE a thousand and ten percent. What WWE is, is they're a huge family. You don't really want any antagonistic people within that. Kind of reminds me of like, you know, like a CM Punk kind of twins. Just here to disrupt the flow. Absolutely the moment you sign them, be like, oh, we want to be world tag team champ, women's tag team champions. Or, hey, I want to be the champion on Raw. I want to be the champion on SmackDown. You know, just you don't want to deal with selfish wrestlers. And ultimately, I feel like bringing these, uh, you know, once when you're kind of accused of, you know, allegations, and it's a thousand and ten percent allegations. But, you know, I feel like right now what you have with the NXT roster, you have Julia. You also have Stephanie Vecure in the winks. It's something that's promising. There's something that's promising. So hopefully, you know, they were just there to, to cheer on their their family or whatever. Would not want to see them within WWE. All right, now we have Matt Riddle in the news again. Ex WWE star Matt Riddle wants to fight Jake Paul, obviously the brother of Logan Paul. Jake called out Riddle's uh, constant desire to fight. Tension is fueling between these two. Uh, Matt Riddle had this to say because um, uh, Jake Paul said that, like, really, Matt Riddle? Who is that? Sounds like a guy who just wants a paycheck. But Matt Riddle responded on social media saying that I will forfeit all money, you know, knocking him out is worth more than any amount of money. So maybe something that could be in the, you know, in the pro obviously you saw, you see the kickboxing nature of Matt Riddle, the MMA, also professional wrestling. So this could be a, this could, this would be a really great match. I would honestly love to see this match more than uh, Jake Paul taking on Mike Tyson. Obviously Mike Tyson dealing with health issues. It was rumored and actually confirmed that they reached out to Logan Paul to fight his own brother uh, instead of, uh, you know, of Mike Tyson. So, you know, Matt Riddle just rattling up the cages could possibly be, you know, something for the future within professional wrestling because, you know, you see these two guys, you know, Jake Paul, his brother, like I said, I like Matt Riddle. I miss Matt Riddle being on the WWE roster. roster. Definitely think that he still has a lot to be within professional wrestling. So, uh, yeah. All right, next we have uh, Sting took to social media, took to Twitter to speak about Britt Baker taking on taking a page out of his playbook. He said, and I quote, it's showtime, DMD, which is awesome. I definitely think that's awesome. Love that they use the Sting mask within that. Um, Sting retired, recently retired from AEW like about four months ago. But, uh, you know, it was kind of cool to see a legend, a WCW legend. If you would have made it to WWE, would have been a WWE legend, a TNA legend, and an AEW legend. Definitely in all, you know, all four of those Hall of Fames, which is pretty cool, which is pretty dynamite. Um, Sting, you know, when he made it onto the books of WCW, I loved it. I loved seeing Sting. I loved seeing his character. He was like just that vigilante. Kind of remind me of like a Undertaker meets like kind of like the, a Batman kind of approach, kind of like you know character development and stuff like that. Then you saw uh, you know Britt Baker DMD having that get up, taking on uh, Sasha Banks or Mercedes Monet, and Mercedes Monet. Oh, I'm gonna call the cops. I'm gonna get the cops involved. I'm gonna you know like dude, it's oh that's wrestling. That's just you know that's just professional wrestling. So absolutely love to see that. Absolutely love to see a little bit of nostalgia with the professional wrestling. So uh, yeah, 1,010%.
Well, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys had an amazing week. Hope you guys enjoyed my show. Thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast. Brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Here at the GSMC Sports Network, we do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity. So don't forget to lose to 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 leave uh, a kind comment. Um, remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. Um, remember to follow us on uh, Twitter slash X. Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook for more content and updates. If I haven't made you a wrestling fan by now, I want to remind you guys to, to you know, just kind of reflect on sports. Remember that we got my man Tommy talking about college football. College football is right around the corner. We also have uh, Manny with the Chip Shop Football Podcast, Kenneth with the GSMC Football Podcast. We have football right around the corner. And what comes with football? Fantasy leagues. Fantasy Chris Chris Shepard on his uh, GSMC Fantasy Sports podcast talk about you know who you should draft who you should you know if you're a betting man bet your money on so make sure you tune into that we got TJ and um, Jeremy on sports we also have my boy Nelson on basketball my boy Sam on baseball and also the Andrew Tate uh, podcast so make sure you check that out on the GSMC Sports Network that's it for me hope you guys are having an amazing weekend remember to have plans. Love, hug your loved ones and, you know, just take life one day at a time. Enjoy your weekend. Definitely love you guys. One last time. I believe in Joe Hendrick.